Welcome to BBNet Media. Join us for inspiring gospel messages on faith and relationships. Let's explore God's words and His love together for stronger connection with Him. New messages are uploaded regularly on this channel. So please subscribe, like, comment, and share. And hit that notification bell to stay up to date. God bless you. The keys to a life of impact, meaning, and fulfillment. The first key to an excelling life, a life of impact, is to have a genuine experience with Jesus. Many people in church, many people who want to live meaningful lives, they do not want to follow this route of Jesus. They prefer to follow other routes. But I can tell you the Bible declares that Jesus is the way, not a way, not one of the ways. When it has to do with destiny actualization, living a life of impact and meaning, it starts with Jesus. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am life. Number two, the second key that is responsible for a life of impact, an enviable destiny indeed, is to contend for transformation, the power of a superior belief system the power of a superior belief system the power of a superior belief system nobody is born transformed write that down please nobody transformation is not inherited nobody inherits transformation we are born with all kinds of mindsets genetically conditioned and environmentally conditioned please lend me your attention nobody is born transformed transformation is not a gift transformation is not an inheritance nobody inherits a transformed mind nobody is born transformed we are taught that there are two major ways that we are conditioned mentally number one is our genetic programming number two which is a greater basis for our, our mindsets is our environmental programming if you were born say in china you will most likely be speaking chinese if you were born in say europe you will most likely be speaking with the accent of a, an european are we together now there are people who were born in the north and it didn't matter if they were yoruba or Igbo or hausa because of the environmental conditioning some of them would speak northern languages with such fluency. There are people who are northern born who speak Yoruba even more than those who are born from the west. Our environment condition us and it's important for us to know this. Listen to me. I wrote something here while preparing my notes. A teacup cannot retain the same amount of water as a large storage tank. A teacup cannot desire the destiny of a large storage tank. It is not possible. Are we together? The difference is capacity. It will be foolish for a teacup to desire the destiny of a large GP water tank. Their capacities are not the same. All of them can hold water, but a teacup may just hold just, just little enough for you to be able to take your tea or coffee but a large water tank can preserve water. You can take your bath from there. You can use it to cook. You can do a lot of things. So many people are carrying the mentality of a teacup, but they desire the destiny of a large water storage tank. The good thing about mindsets is that you can transform your mind. You can be transformed like the Bible says. It says, do not be conformed to this world, Romans 12 verse 2, but be ye transformed, be ye transformed, it's an active expression, be ye transformed, don't wish transformation, don't hope for transformation, you contend for transformation, I've taught you extensively, listen, I would say second to my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, about the greatest gift I know that has helped in making me become who I am now by the grace of God is the power of a superior belief system. I will always challenge you. Your life will revolve around your belief system. Something you believe about God 
or don't believe about God can leave you defeated. Something you believe about Satan or not believe about Satan can leave you defeated. Something you believe about failure, something you believe about success. I have spent my time teaching here and teaching our global audience on principles that help to shape your beliefs. Implanting the wisdom of God. Teachings like lessons from an overcomer. I recommend that again. Go and listen to it again. For instance, in that teaching, I taught you that ignorance is not a demon. You don't cast away ignorance by conducting deliverance over it. That the cure to ignorance is to contend for light. Do you know just having that change of mentality can bring you into victory? You stop giving excuses. I remember in that teaching, I taught you that it is not what happens to you that really affects you. It's the meaning that you connect to what happens to you. Are we together? If you recall in that teaching, I taught you that what is the difference between falling under the anointing in church and falling under the anointing, say, in a restaurant? All of them require you falling. But while you fall under the anointing in church, you stand up rejoicing because you have associated a meaning to that experience, a meaning of growth, a meaning of ascending spiritually. So you're not embarrassed, male or female, young or old. But if you fall in a restaurant, that is not an impartation. Are we together? It's most likely a proof of maybe a show of mistake. You stepped on your feet or something and you feel embarrassed. The difference is the meaning. So most of the pain that we keep carrying, most of the disappointments, you are the only one who is thinking like that. The world does not see it your way. You look at life from the lens of your mindset. Let me teach you something. You don't see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. Never forget that. You do not see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. That is the reason why a blind man can still see. Are we together now? Yes. Blind people still see. They don't just see clear enough to walk, we know, with our eyes. But they still see. Their creativity is proof that they still see. Many people think that they see with their eyes. No, you see through your eyes. You see with your mind. Your mindset is the lens, the vista with which you view life. You can look at life from the lens of a defeated person. A defeated mindset will call a palace a hut. A defeated mindset will call glory shame. A defeated mindset will call process delay. A defeated mindset will call falling down as a result of learning. Amateurism, you will call it hopelessness. But a victorious mindset will reinterpret things. Let me tell you the truth. The quality of your life and your destiny in ministry, in business, in career, remains at the mercy of the kind and the quality of beliefs that you inculcate. I've done several teachings along this line that our belief systems are largely shaped from culture, our past experiences. When you come into Christ, you must submit your mind for transformation. It's one of the major assignments of the teaching ministry. It's not just to enlighten you, but to correct your understanding. The mentality that you have is edited using the reference of the Word of God. And every mindset you have that is inconsistent with God's way, you allow the Holy Spirit to gently do that work of editing. And then you find out that your life begins to evolve. It begins to change, reflecting that growth in your mindset. I recall teaching you that success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by reason of who you are becoming. And when I talk of becoming, I'm talking of growth in your mindset. My life changed when I found out that if I paid more attention to my mindset than my physical life, my physical life will eventually reflect my growth. The second key that makes for an excelling destiny is to contend for transformation a superior belief system. Number three, the third key that I've seen by the grace of God in my life, I have seen in the life of every man who has represented greatness in life, in destiny, and even in the Christendom, is to be valuable. Please write it down. The power of value. The third key that makes for a life of impact, glory, excellence, meaning, and fulfillment is 
to be valuable. In fact, I wrote here to be extremely valuable. Mark 137. Mark 137. Extremely valuable. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. This is the proof of value. All men, all nations, all men does not just mean all humans. It means business people seek for thee. It means those who are in need of the touch of Jesus seek for you. It means diplomats seek for you. All kinds of people. When you become valuable, all men will seek for you. Listen to what I wrote here. Your value and contribution determines your reward, your influence, and even your fulfillment. Let me say that again. Your value and contribution as far as the lives and the destinies of men is concerned, your value and your contribution is what determines your reward, is what determines your influence, and is what determines your fulfillment. How true. You cannot have an impactful life when you are not a contributor in terms of your value. Now, we're not called to do everything. In fact, we're not called to have everything. I think I was teaching our lovely school, was it School of Ministry students? Yes. And I was telling them that there are things I cannot do. There are things I'm not even interested in learning. There are things I don't want to do. I don't want to become. It's not part of the script of my destiny. But there are certain things I must press unto until I become. Because it is part of the blueprint of my destiny. You're not called in destiny to be everything. You're not called in destiny to do everything. But the value and contribution that is required insists and ensure that you build capacity until you are able to deliver value, extreme value. By the privilege of God's grace, we are gathered today to celebrate me by his grace. I almost feel embarrassed saying this, but I'm, I'm grateful to God for that. If I did not contend for value, number one, you most likely would not know me or my life would not be significant enough for you to think that you need to invest your destiny, your attention, your loyalty, your support. You see that? In driving this vision. Value is very powerful. The cure for a life that is bankrupt of reward, the cure for a life that is bankrupt of influence, the cure for a life that is bankrupt of fulfillment is to be extremely valuable. Extremely valuable. For someone you are that chef we are waiting for. Give your best to it. For someone, you are that apostle and that prophet the nations are waiting for. Give your best to it. For someone, you are that entrepreneur that needs to come and redefine the economy God's way. To someone, you are that politician who will rise with integrity and redefine how governance is done in the political space. To someone, you are that career person that needs to rise to the zenith of your profession. By all godly means, whatever it is that can make you valuable, that you can serve the nation, serve the purposes of God, make lives better, contend for it, go for knowledge, go for knowledge, go for knowledge until you become extremely valuable. Number four. The fourth key that is responsible for a life of impact, I'm praying that you're learning and I'm praying that what you are receiving will help make major contributions to your becoming and your excelling. Number four, master relationships. Master relationships. Psalm 115 verse 16. This is a very big secret to impact a very big secret to a life of influence, a life of grace, glory, and fulfillment. Master relationships. I have taught you and let me teach you again this morning that this is the world of men. Please say that after me. This is the world of men. One more time. This is the world of men. Yes, sir. It is the world of men. The Bible says the heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord but the earth that is where you are domiciled for now the earth hath he given not will he give hath he given to the children of men anything that will happen in your life will depend on relationships 
let me spare a few minutes here just to remind you of a few things I've said about relationships. I will run them literally like I'm dictating a note. Please listen. That destiny fulfillment is impossible without relationships. I have taught you this. And that relationships are advantageous connections. They are connections that can lead to your glory and connections that can lead to your doom. Many people have been destroyed today because of relationships. Many destinies have been built and made today because of relationships. I taught you also that relationships are currencies. Never forget that. That they can buy anything money can buy. They can also buy what money cannot buy. Let me say that again. That relationships are currencies. Hard currencies. They can buy anything money can buy. And they can also buy things that money cannot buy. I taught you that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections. Never forget this. The easiest way, that means if you don't have any advantage whatsoever in your life, you feel you're not gifted, you feel you came from a background with no honor, no glory, the easiest way to begin to scale yourself to an enviable destiny is to have correct relationships. Recall that I taught you that relationships is tripartite. Your relationship with God, your relationship with men, and your relationship with things. Your relationship with God, the basis of your spiritual excellence. Your relationship with men, and your relationship with things. There is a way you can relate with God that translates to your profiting. There is a way you can relate with men that translate to your profiting. There is a way you can relate with things that translate to your profiting. For instance, money and material things. There is a healthy way of relating with things and there is a destructive way of relating with things. If you allow things to get into your heart, that becomes an unhealthy relationship that leads to your destruction. I was having a meeting back home just before I rushed to come here and while we're discussing I just thought to myself again the power and the value of relationships. You are as powerful on earth as the relationships that support your growth. You are as powerful on earth as the relationships that endorse you. You are as powerful on earth as the relationships that become ladders for your rising. You are as powerful on earth as the men and the women who have agreed to become allies to your greatness. Do not downplay relationships. I taught you how to maintain relationships. Let me remind you that you cannot re maintain relationships until you learn to rise above competitive jealousy. That you only maintain relationships when you avoid evil speaking. When you speak negatively, when you are careless with words, you will not be able to maintain relationships. Because as we say, what goes around will always come around. You say nasty things about people, it will return back to haunt you. Many, many people's destinies have been pegged and even locked indefinitely today because of careless use of words. They said something to someone yesterday, not knowing they were speaking to Joseph in the pit, who would later become Joseph on the throne. Are we together? Practice forgiveness, I taught you. Maintaining relationships. Practice tolerance. I told you the difference. I'm not telling you things I don't do. Honestly, this is my life. Practice forgiveness. Practice tolerance. Forgiveness means to grant pardon to an offender. But tolerance is to factor in the weakness and the limitations of people. Because it will happen again and again and again. Are we together? For instance, I gave in that teaching... A noisy person does not need forgiveness. He needs tolerance. Are we together now? If a noisy person tells you sorry and you say, I forgive you, you've not been well educated as far as spiritual intelligence is concerned. Being noisy is, does not require forgiveness. It requires tolerance because two or three minutes after that, the person is still going to make noise again. Practice forgiveness and tolerance. Be an active country contributor my God never embrace parasitic relationships do not be the only one receiving 
Never be in a relationship where you are the only receiver. And I have taught you here. Koinonia, bless God for the truth you are learning all. Honestly. Bless God for the truth you are learning. It's true. These are irrefutable principles. If you don't have value to give, give gratitude. Remember? I have taught you. Every time you don't have anything to give in a relationship, give gratitude. Give honor. They are commodities. They can maintain relationships. Anytime you are in a relationship with someone and you don't know what to give, maybe you feel you don't have as much value. Maybe you feel you are not that educated. Maybe um, in terms of stratification, the person is far higher than you. Lavish that relationship with consistent gratitude. And you would have matched up your contribution in that relationship. I have seen this work like a charm i've seen this work sorry for using that expression but i for want of word i've seen it work in in a way that can only be termed magical that ordinary people you will wonder you will almost think they are unequally yoked it's just that it's not with unbelievers what is a great ceo doing with this orderly or this adc he may not even be so smart but one thing they know to do is to say thank you and that person will carry them everywhere and you say why do you love this person there are many gifted people and the great person will tell you a gifted rebel is not an asset the person who may not be gifted but has a heart of gratitude is by far more valuable than somebody who is gifted with the tendency of rebellion are you learning i would prefer a grateful person to an intelligent person I will go through the rigor of building the grateful person and add intelligence to that heart because that gratitude means a lot to me than a PhD. I can pay the price and build a grateful person. But show me a gifted person who does not have gratitude. That is an intelligent disaster on its way to happen. Be an active contributor. Never be part of any relationship that you are not adding to. Give me, give me. Bad attitude. Give me, give me. On scriptural approach, there are, you know that you are becoming a parasite because people run away from you. They don't want to pick your call. They give all kinds of excuses. Immediately you see that. Let me give you intelligence. Once people start avoiding you, go back. Use honor to open the door. Use gratitude to keep yourself there. Did you get that? The moment a door closes, this honor is looming around. Listen, when you know these principles, life will become so predictable. The moment a door refuses to open, just know that this honor, knowingly or unknowingly, has found expression there. I usually will have access to the office. I will just open the door and the CEO says, come. But I'm noticing a body language that is not good. How are you, sir? Fine. I'm here again. God bless you. I'm going, save Johnny. Immediately, I can tell you with the intelligence of a consultant, what is wrong is dishonor. Dishonor is looming somewhere. And if that relationship is that valuable, swallow your pride immediately and use honor to mend it. Sometimes you may not be wrong. You are just disadvantaged. So you'll be the one to reach out and mend it. Waiting until you are right will leave you in a lot of trouble. That is the reality of our world. You will need to humble yourself and mend certain relationships so that you will not be the victim. And then use gratitude to secure your position. Let me tell you something about life. Everywhere you are standing, someone else is praying for it too. If you are careless with that position and you shift, you may not even have a space to return again. This is how destiny is. That God brought a strategic destiny helper. Are we together? that God put you in a position in your corporation, God brought certain uncommon relationships to you. You see, the flattery of relationships is that you never imagine you can be replaced. Until you are careless and you move, someone will say, thank you, Jesus. I've been praying for this position of a secretary. You took it for granted. And as soon as they left you, you wanted to come back, but there was no space again. Many people, listen, Mankind as a species, we desire growth and growth is space dependent. When there is no more space, there is no growth. 
Every time you are careless with the space God gives you, you put yourself at risk. Say amen. Perhaps someone came to church today to learn this. Go back and re-examine your relationships. When relationships benefit you, drop pride. Don't say, I don't care. I can't say sorry. What is there? I don't want to look cheap. I don't want to be a fool. Unfortunately, you will still pay the price and be a fool while paying the price. Which is cheaper? Humility or suffering alienated from the privileges that come. Someone is paying your school fees and you cannot say sorry. Relationships. Master kindness. Don't be wicked. If you are wicked, you will not have friends. And if you have those friends, you only reproduce yourself in those relationships. Be kind. The quality of being friendly. The quality of being generous. The quality of being considerate. The quality of being hospitable. Has someone learned already? Yes. It's a powerful principle. A dear senior friend came to my house this morning and great man that I love and honor and respect so much. I was so humbled as he took the time to come packaged a gift for me and came and we're having a talk and I said sir you didn't have to do this you are such a busy person and he said no apostle and I laughed I remembered what I know and I there is no wondering why he's where he is you see that every time relationships listen when God connects you to greatness when God connects you to great people he will not maintain it for you it is your responsibility to maintain the greatness. Did you get that? Let me say that again. When God connects you to great people, don't wait for him to maintain it for you. Make the extra effort to maintain quality relationships. Now, let me tell you this. When your investment in relationships is not genuine, you can be investing and there will still not be returns. Let me tell you what that means. When people know that the only reason why you are around them is because your hand is somewhere waiting for something to collect every good thing you are doing becomes ugly immediately are we together the beauty of investment in relationships is that there is authenticity and purity in it you must learn this that means when you are saying good morning sir i hope what you mean is i'm ready for the money if that is what you mean then the man will know that you are a psychophant and you are a hypocrite and that greeting will not make sense again so make sure that you are not just a parasite doing things because you feel ah this man has money oh, let's treat him well how are you can i clean your car can i clean your shoe how about washing your clothes i am at your service and it's you are you are speaking to money you are not speaking to the man people want you to love them for who they are not for what they carry the moment people find out you are around their life, you are dangling around, whether money or fame or power. Let me tell you, great people are not stupid. They know those who are around them genuinely out of love and those who are around them as parasites. That what lured them to, you to them, once it disappears, you go with them. Back then, we used to call it friend for food. FFF. You see that? I remember then in secondary school, there used to be this group of people they don't know you until visiting day. We have something called visiting day. When your parents come, they bring food. And you will see a cruel person who would not even have the, the courtesy to say hello. Suddenly roaming around your corner. And you are, what are you doing here? Just checking up on you, making sure. That's your mother. Wow, that's interesting. Looks like I've seen her. I know her somewhere. All that story is to get a share of the food. By evening, they have become their real self. Master relationships. Remember the four expressions I taught you? I'm sorry. Still remember it? Thank you. God bless you. Please. You've forgotten. You will need it all. That when you offend people, say, I am sorry. Don't say sorry. Who is sorry? Are we together? Please is a language of courtesy. It's an expression of courtesy. Don't tell someone, stand up. Call me. Call me back. The person wants to help you and you are saying, call me back. Learn to say thank you. If someone is kind to you a thousand times, say thank you a thousand times. Don't say I'm saying it too much. Then it means you want the kindness to stop. Learn to say God bless you. Hallelujah. Now let's go to number five very quickly. What is the fifth key that is responsible for a life of impact, a life of grace and glory, a life of meaning? Are you ready? Be a person of character. 
be a person of character you must live by values if you want to be great there is no great person i know sustainably genuinely great who downplayed the relevance of character be a man or a woman of character proverbs 25 and verse 28 please give it to us quickly 25 28 proverbs he that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls let me tell you this you must be able to have control over your words you must be able to have control over your conduct and your behavior you will lose out a thousand times in life if you cannot control your words james spoke to us about the the seriousness of this tongue you see there are many people who close the gates of their destiny because of careless use of words they said things that should not be said and it went round and got to the ears of their helpers and those doors became shut how about your conduct protocol is the expected behavior in any environment let me repeat that again that protocol is the expected behavior in any environment there is a way to behave and don't say it does not matter there are many people who don't behave well you go to an occasion the organizers have not eaten you are the first you just put your hand and say am i allowed to touch everything you touch both the ones that are for you and the ones that are not for you bad behavior and while people were praying you were praying they were already admiring you for your spirituality and you rubbish that that thing in at the table what demons could not do bad behavior has now done you see that now are we learning it's very important be a person of character a person of character be disciplined be diligent restrain yourself know when to speak don't cheapen your words no let your words carry your words are valuable when you spill your words out carelessly a time comes nobody takes you seriously even if you are serious do you know there are people if they are tell even if they are telling you somebody died you have to say show me the dead body first because they have a track record of their words have become so cheapened nothing they ever say is taken seriously be a person of character it's often said the anointing will take you up but it is character that will maintain you the anointing will take you up bring you greatness bring you to the table of greatness but if you lack character i give you an assurance under god nobody will follow you it's a matter of time you will be leading yourself nobody listen people don't just look for spirituality people don't just look for intelligence they look for character stability of mind nobody wants to follow a leader who is boisterous in your emotions you are not connected there is no stability you are so unpredictable people cannot say no to as touching this matter i can know that this is where this person stands if you don't have character you will not go anywhere are we together someone keeps money with you by evening you've touched something from the money and you say don't worry i know that is just how life is no you have to be disciplined be a person a man or a woman of character are we learning let me give you the final key as far as a life of impact is concerned and i'm drawing this from my broadcast last year the spirit of god asked me to still remind you on that and that's why i'm bringing it here the third, the sixth key that is responsible for a life of impact is the power of purpose. The power of purpose. The power of purpose. I taught you last year, if you recall, that purpose answers the question why. It is one question you must ask. Why? Why do I want fame? Why do I want increase? In fact, motif is a subset of purpose you see if your motif is corrupted it's because you did not even know what the purpose was in the first place my greatly revered mentor of blessed memory dr miles monroe would say when the purpose of a thing is not known he says abuse is yes the word abuse means abnormal use use outside of its predefined 
purpose. Why do you want fame? Why do you want wealth? Why do you want anointing? Listen, desires and pursuits only become profitable to us when they are connected to purpose. This is powerful. Desires and pursuits, any desire at all and any pursuit in life only becomes profitable when it is connected to purpose. I want to be great. Why? Apostle, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. Why? I want to be like you. Why? If you cannot ask, answer the question why, then you do not qualify to step into certain realms and certain dimensions in destiny. Asking the question why, I wrote here, is a powerful secret. Do you know what it does? It will help you tame your insatiable appetites. The question why always helps men to tame our insatiable appetites. There are appetites we have as men that it seems like it can never be satisfied. The question why brings, it tames your appetites. It also tames from your life the temptation of vain living. The temptation of vain living. A man who cannot consistently ask the question why is the man who does not have control over his destiny. You will do anything that looks good. You will go anywhere that looks right. Why? Join this club. Why? Be part of Koinonia. Why? If you can ask the question why, you will be delivered from many troubles in your life. There are many people today who have gotten into trouble and they cannot answer the question why. Why did you join that chariot? Why did you join that association? Are we together? Why? Asking the question why is a secret that can help you tame your appetite. All things are lawful. Please look at me. But not all things are expedient. I have taught you that when Satan brings evil and you're not interested, he will bring good that is not connected to purpose. The most important thing is he wants your destruction. You must learn to ask the question, why? I want to go to America, why? To Canada, why? To US, why? I don't want to go, why? I want to be a serious Christian, why? I'm not interested in the things of God, why? Always connect purpose. Once purpose is in place, then you are not afraid of pursuing things. You are not afraid of desire. If you tell me, Apostle, I want a billion naira, I'm not going to say you are joking. A billion. You spell it by yourself. No, I won't do that. I want a billion naira. I'm going to ask you the question, why? I'm just tired. I want to live a better life. Then you don't need a billion naira. No. You don't need a billion naira for a better life. You see that now? Why do you need a billion naira? I'm tired of poverty. I need to be rich. Too small a reason. Most people do not, they can't answer the question why. Why do you want the anointing? So that me too, people will know that I'm not a very a small person. Too small a reason. Beyond personal ambition, beyond the desire to outshine, beyond the desire to be successful and celebrated, we must seek to see Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. That must be your biggest why. The why that drives your life. The why that literally pilots everything you do. Beyond personal ambition, which is not necessarily bad. Beyond the desire to be great, which is not necessarily bad. Beyond the desire to be successful. Beyond the desire to be celebrated. Beyond the desire for fame, for things, for progress, we must seek as the highest why, the highest priority to see Jesus Christ revealed in and through our lives and to see Jesus glorified. Are we together? Listen to me. I wrote something here and I want you to listen. Manage the obsession for self-glorification. Manage, this is a message that is very important, especially for our world today. Manage the temptation, the craving for self-glorification. As a person, I'm not interested in any association, any group, any pursuit that cannot afford me the opportunity to reveal Jesus and bring him glory. 
That's why I'm not part of many things. I'm not part of many associations. Once I cannot find in it an opportunity to reveal Jesus, I can wave you from afar. Carry your trouble and go. My entire life revolves around revealing Jesus. Did you hear what I said? Come and join this. Come and some of us are in all kinds of groups until you found out now you're on your way to hellfire. They call you good. It doesn't have to be demonic groups. You are part of everything that has choked your opportunity to reveal Jesus. When you should go to church, that's when they are having their meeting. And because it's not a religious group, they say you need to be there. They made you secretary. You later became chairman. Anything that interrupts an opportunity to be a serious Christian, to love Jesus, to build, to grow, to reveal him and glorify him is vanity as far as this life is concerned. Edit the activities in your life. Every activity and every pursuit in your life that is not directly connected to the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same, let it mark time from today. And you will find out that you have enough space. There are not many things we're supposed to do in life. It's the vanity of our lives that has created so many activities in our lives that choke us and we cannot even sleep. Our world is full of this statement, I am busy. And if you edit the things we are doing, I can tell you sincerely, without exaggeration, over 80% of our human activities on earth are unnecessary for our excelling and unnecessary as far as destiny is concerned. Just luggages that were choked upon that caravan called destiny. It's time to put some of those things down. There are many luggages you have been carrying. Throw them away. They have no value and no relevance. Not in your today. Not in your becoming. Not in your excelling. Not in your eternal destiny. Edit vanity from your life. So that your life is efficient enough. That everything you are doing has a direct bearing on the revelation of Jesus. I made a decision many years ago to decongest my life. I found out that there are many activities upon the face of the earth that are simply time wasters. You wouldn't know how much they waste your time until God helps you to progress in age. One day you will get up and say, what returns have I gotten for investing my time in this mundane activity? Seven, let me give you the final key. Understand the brevity of life on earth. You want to live an impactful life? You want to live... A life of meaning and fulfillment, not without this understanding. Understand the brevity of life. Thank you for watching BBNet Media. May the inspiration and knowledge you have received today stay with you throughout your week. If you've been blessed by this message, please share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all our latest inspirational contents join us next time for a more uplifting messages on faith and relationships until then keep working in faith and remember that god is always with you guiding and directing your path thank you once again for watching god bless you richly